Good evening. This is Otto Kruger, welcoming you to the Screen Mystery Club. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to become a member of the Screen Mystery Club. Each week, a famous motion picture mystery story will be presented especially for club members. Tonight, we present When Strangers Marry, a superb blend of mystery and suspense. And now, here is your host and narrator of the Screen Mystery Club, the distinguished actor of both stage and screen, Mr. Otto Kruger. Hello. Well, pull up your chairs and make yourselves comfortable as we unfold the peculiar events in this week's prize screen play, When Strangers Marry. Our story really begins, quite innocently, on a streamlined train speeding toward New York City. It is late, past midnight, and standing before the door of a private drawing room is an attractive girl in her early twenties. Simply dressed, she seems to be having difficulty making up her mind to knock. But finally... Pardon me, but uh, the porter is making up the berth in my car and... I wonder if I could sit here for a few minutes. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is my first trip to New York. Is that so? Yes, I... I'm going to meet my husband. How nice. Uh, uh, we, we're newlyweds. Oh. Well, child, go on. Tell me all about it. What's he like? Well, he's tall and handsome and has the nicest smile strange kind of smile. Just like him. I mean, a smile is kind of strange. How'd you meet him? Well, you see, I was working in a little restaurant in Grantsville. That's where I live. And uh, one day he just came in. Love at first sight? No, I didn't pay much attention to him, really. I remember our first date. I didn't want to go. But somehow that night I found myself waiting for him. We just walked. He didn't say much. How long did you know him before you were married? Well, I only saw him three times, but... I'm terribly in love with him. And he sent me a telegram to come to New York. Oh, here, I'll read it to you. August 11th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mildred Baxter. That's our name now. Have reserved room at Sherwin Hotel, New York. We'll meet you there tomorrow morning. Paul. What's his business? Well, he sells something or other. I really don't know. Well, it's almost as if you'd married a stranger, isn't it? Stranger? Well, you see, uh, uh, we... Uh... Sure, but I know it's really tough to find a room these days. I even have trouble trying to get a room for my friends in this hotel. I meet a bartender here. Imagine. Gee, I figured with the convention ending today, I'd surely get a room. Well, guess I'll get going. Hey, hey, wait a minute. One of them convention nights Mr. Prescott, he ain't checked out yet. He's got a suite. Arr, 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 I'm king of the jungle. That sounds like him now. Arr, 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 I'm king of the jungle. That's me, and I'm thirsty. Very, very thirsty. Ain't had a drink in... in... in about 20 minutes, Mr. Prescott. Ah, there you house it, old boy, old boy. Yes, sir. How's the bartender? The best bartender in the Hotel Philadelphia. <laughs> That's a good one, ain't it? <laughs> Well, set him up for me. Yeah, sure, but this man here is the only one in a place that's past closing time. Hello, friend. Have a drink? Thanks. Here, uh, that'll be a dollar twenty. Oh, um, Mr. Prescott, uh, yeah. this man ain't got a room to sleep in, and, um, uh, he was wondering... Sure, if... sure, he can come up with me. I got a like of lots of room. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, here you. Drop some of your money. Ah, oh, that doesn't matter. I got lots of money. Ten thousand dollars right here. Always carried with me. I don't believe in banks. Tried them once, see? Gee, Mr. Prescott, you shouldn't ought to be carrying that much dough around with you. It might be dangerous. Dangerous? <laughs> I got my good friend here. Uh, what's your name, friend? Paul. See? Paul, protect me, won't you, Paul? Paul what? Just Paul. <laughs> okay, just Paul. Come on with me. We'll find you a bed. Whoa! <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Prescott. Mr. Prescott, I got 26 rooms to clean, and I can't take all day at it. I got to come in and clean your place. Mr. Prescott. Them conventions. My lands fell asleep right in that chair, and, and with a woman's silk stocking around his neck, the idea. Uh, uh, come on, Mr. Prescott, you got to get up. Mr. Prescott, you got to wake up and... Mr. Prescott... Front boy, ice water up to 421 and then go to 926 and pick up bags. That old dame's checking out. Hey, Harry, seen the papers? That silk stocking murder over in Philly was sure gruesome. <laughs> Glad nothing like that ever happens here at the Sherwin. Oh, clerk. Yes, ma'am? I'm Mrs. Baxter. Mrs. Baxter? My husband reserved a room. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, yes, he phoned in yesterday afternoon. Paul Baxter. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Run. Here, boy. Take Mrs. Baxter's things up to room 1410. Well, my husband didn't get here yet? No, not yet. Well, that's funny. He wired me that... Billy! Oh, Fred! What a break! I didn't think you'd come to New York. Oh, no, Fred, please don't. What, these people? What, they're just a bunch of tired salesmen. They've seen a kiss before. No, it's not that, Fred. Well, then what? You got my letter, didn't you? What letter? Well... What are you doing here? My husband sent for me. Your husband? Yes, I'm married, Fred. <laughs> oh. Well, do I know him? Well, I don't think so. His name's Paul Baxter. Well, when were you married? A month ago in Grantsville. Oh. Why are you stopping here at the Sherwin? This is a salesman's hotel. Paul's a salesman. Well, so am I, remember? <laughs> That's the reason you wouldn't marry me. Well, I, I guess... He must have been a better salesman than me, I guess. Ah, but that won't keep me from wishing you the best of everything, Millie. And, uh... I'll be seeing you around. Fred? Yeah? What did you write in that letter? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter now. Desk clerk, this is Mrs. Baxter. Have you heard from Mr. Baxter yet? Oh, oh, you'll let me know, won't you? Yes, I'll be right here waiting. Thank you. I'm sorry, Millie. It's only me. Oh, Fred. I've been waiting and waiting. I understand, Millie. Sit down, Fred. Thanks. I don't know what to think. Paul was supposed to meet me here this morning, and, and here it is after three. Yeah, I know. But I'm sure he's all right. Oh, it's so awful waiting and not knowing. Well, wondering. Say, uh, maybe I can help you find him. Who does he work for? Well, I really don't know. Well, what does he sell? Oh, I know it seems strange, but I don't know for certain. Well, Millie, what can you tell me about him? Very little, I'm afraid. I only saw him three times before we were married. Three times? Yes, I, I know it sounds odd. Well, what about his family, then? Where do they live? I don't know that either. And all you have is a telegram he sent you? And our marriage license. May I see the telegram? Oh, yes, of course. Here. Mm-hmm. You see, he said he'd meet me here this morning. Yeah, well, he'd probably show up in a little while, and maybe he got delayed by a buyer. I don't know how that is. But it sure looks like you married a stranger. A stranger? Yes, doesn't it? Hello, desk clerk. This is Mrs. Baxter in room 1410 again. Have you heard from Mr. Baxter yet? Nothing? Well, yes, I know, but he was supposed to arrive this morning. It's after ten now. Yes, please remember to put all calls through, no matter how late it is. Thank you. The weatherman promises some relief for New Yorkers tomorrow. He predicts the thermometer will be five to six degrees lower than it did today, with a high of 84 at noon. Hello? Over on Capitol Hello? Hill, it was announced what? that the Senate will shortly go into what? its summer recess. I, I can't hear. Senator Just Corman of Oklahoma moment, was quoted please. as saying that he... Hello? Oh, hello, I can hear you now. I turned the radio off. Hello? Hello? Hello, operator? Operator? 
Hello, this is Mrs. Baxter again. Someone telephoned me just a second ago, and I, I went to turn my radio off, and when I got back, the line was dead. Well, what? Well, didn't he give his name? You sure? I see. Thank you. And the Philadelphia police have flatly stated that the silk stocking killer has left Philadelphia for New York City. The New York police have summoned Jacob Hauser, the bartender at the Hotel Philadelphia, who saw the killer and suspected a short while before the killing. Hauser has stated that the killer's first name is... Paul? Hello, Paul? Oh, hello, Fred. No, I haven't heard a thing. The what? Missing Persons Bureau in the morning. Oh, yes, yes, I suppose you're right. I'll be ready at eight. Yes, thank you, Fred. Good night. You got the wrong department. This is homicide. The missing persons bureau is down the hall. But can't you help us? Well, uh, let's see that telegram again. Hmm. Your husband's name is Paul? Yes, Paul Baxter. Okay, I'll take the information. Oh, thank you, thank you. Your name? Mildred Baxter. Address? The Sherwin Hotel. What was the last time you saw your husband? The day we were married. A month and four days ago. You see, I I met him. That's really all, Lieutenant. Hmm. Is there anything else you can tell me? No, I I don't think so. How about you, Graham? Can you add anything? Well, I've never seen the man. You will find him, won't you? We'll do our best, lady. But you've practically married a stranger. Well, uh, thank you, Lieutenant. Maloney, send up Hauser, that bartender from Philadelphia. I think I've got a lead. I want to talk to him. No, Mrs. Baxter, no word yet. Hello? Hello? Oh, Fred. No, not yet. The correct time is five seconds before 7.30, courtesy of... Hello, desk clerk. This is Mr. Baxter. Oh, thank you. And in the silk stocking murder case, the police tonight have asked everyone to be on the lookout for a man answering this description. Six feet tall, dark... No, just tell me where. Yes. Yes, darling, yes. I- I'm leaving right now. And so ends Act One of When Strangers Marry, tonight's Screen Mystery Club story. And in just a moment, we'll give you Act Two. But first, a word from the makers of the product who bring you this program. And now, back to Otto Kruger and Act Two of When Strangers Marry. Millie has at last heard from Paul. Small, nagging suspicions have been crushed down by the knowledge that Paul has called her. Two frantic, wearisome days of waiting have been rewarded, and she hurries to meet the man she loves, completely unaware that murder stalks her every footstep. It's me, Paul. It's me. Paul. Oh, Paul. Paul. Hello, Millie. Oh, Oh, Paul. (laughs) Oh, it's so good to find you. Is anything wrong, Paul? You look so... Oh, no. no, Nothing. I'm just tired. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so relieved. I waited and I waited and I imagined all sorts of things. 
You didn't phone or wire him? I couldn't. I couldn't. It was impossible. Well, I don't care what the reason was. We're together now. That's all I care about. Paul? Yes, dear? Last night, someone telephoned me at the hotel. But they hung up before... Oh, that was meanly. Why did you hang up? Why didn't you call back? Well, I, I heard someone else in the room... I wanted to talk to you alone. Oh, it was just the radio. <laughs> but it doesn't matter now. Oh, that's right. Oh, I was so worried. On the way over here, I just... <laughs> I couldn't imagine why you... Millie, do you love me? Oh, what a question. If I never knew it before, waiting and worrying the way I have for two days has proved it. Forever. Do you love me enough to... Do what, Paul? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Come here. I'm here. Mm, that's good. Oh, I've waited so long for you to kiss me again. <laughs> Paul, do you know what I'm going to do first thing in the morning? What? I'd like to invite Fred Graham to have dinner with us. Oh, I'd rather you didn't, Millie. Oh, but I owe Fred a great deal. He's He's been so kind the last few uh, days. Does he know where you are now? Well, no, dear. You asked me not to tell anyone where I was going. Oh, good, we, we've got a lot of time to make up for it, love. All right, dear, if you want it that way. Oh, by the way. Yes? I noticed that you forgot to change the name on the apartment door. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> sure you did, silly. The name P.J. Moore. It's still on the door. Oh, I, I use that name sometimes. Why? Millie, uh, no matter what happens, ever, I love you. <laughs> to kill me, Lieutenant. He tried to run me down. If I hadn't have seen his car coming, Did I would... Did you get a look at the man who was driving the car? No, no, I didn't, but why should anyone want to murder me? Maybe you know too much, Hauser. You mean... You told the Philadelphia police that the killer's name is Paul. Can't you remember his last name? I tell you, I don't know. Like I said, Mr. Prescott asked the man his name, and this, this man, the killer, said, Paul, just Paul. You're sure of that? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. All right. Now, what is the name of the hotel on the killer suit? I can't remember. I, I can't. Your life may depend on it, Hauser. Yeah, I know, but, but I can't. I, I tried and tried, I tell you. I... That's it. What? Sherwin. Hotel Sherwin. I can see it now. Yeah, that's it. Hotel Sherwin, New York City. You sure? Absolutely sure? Yeah, Hotel Sherwin. Good. What should I do now? Go back to your room and stay there until you hear from me. Look, Graham, I'll have to know everything you know about Paul Baxter. I've told you everything I know. Mm. Well, we think we know who committed the silk stocking murder. We know that a man by the name of Paul did it. We know that he carried a suitcase with the label of the Hotel Sherwin on it. And we know that on the night of the murder, Paul Baxter sent a wire to his wife to meet him at the Hotel Sherwin. Odd coincidence, isn't it? I suppose so. It certainly is. And I'm sure that when we find Paul Baxter, we'll have the killer. What do you want me to do, Lieutenant? Where's Mrs. Baxter now? I don't know. That's what I came to see you about. What do you mean you don't know? You're a friend of hers, aren't you? Well, sure. That's why I'm here. She checked out of the hotel late last night and left no forwarding address. I'm afraid something may have happened to her. Like what? Like what? Well, I don't know. Well, okay, Graham. But just remember, a man who was murdered for money once will murder again. So if you're holding out... Uh, goodbye, Lieutenant. Millie! Fred! What are you doing here? Well, I was worried about you. When you left no forwarding address at the hotel, oh, yes, I... I should have left a note for you. I'm sorry. But what are you doing in police headquarters? I found Paul, Fred. I found him. I'm going to tell Lieutenant Blake he can stop looking for him. Uh, Millie, uh, let's get out of here. But I've got to tell Lieutenant... What's wrong? I can't talk here. Come on downstairs. We can talk while I'm driving you home. But... Oh, all right. <laughs> That's the story, Millie. The police seem pretty certain. But I, I can't believe it. Paul just isn't like that. Well, it, it's possible that uh, a lot of little things that can easily be explained have added up in Lieutenant Blake's mind, just as they're doing in ours. He really has no proof. Paul changed his name. Why should he do that? Well, there may be a hundred reasons. You think he's the murderer, don't you? Well, I... I'm going to find out. Say, uh, let me have your phone number. I'll call in half an hour to to see if everything's all right. It's Parkview 34608. It's the Windsor Apartments on 12th Street. Apartment C. Millie. Yes, Fred? That letter I sent you. What letter? The one I mailed to Grantsville. The, the one I wrote before. 
before I know you were married. Yes, Fred. I... Well, I... I'll call you in half an hour. Thank you, Fred. And I understand what you're trying to say. I'll let you out here. It's only a block or so from your apartment. I, I don't think it'd be wise if Paul saw me driving you home. No, thanks so much. I'll never forget your kindness. Uh, Millie. Yes? Be careful. got in touch with you. It's true, then. It's true, is it? Do you want to hear the story, Millie? Oh, yes. You know, it's funny how things work out. How everything can change in a single night. You go along on a job for years, beating your brains out for $50 a week. And that 50 seems the most important thing in the world. And then you meet a man who carries $10,000 with him. Oh, Paul. I was worried about your coming to New York. Worried about how we'd make out together. We'd have enough to live on. It didn't seem right that a man like that should have all that money. I went with him up to his room. Sure, I wanted his money. But I didn't take it, Millie. I didn't kill him either. Oh, darling. Then why did you hide? Why didn't you go to the police? Would they have believed me? No, no, they wouldn't. But it was wrong to run away. No, Millie. It's only wrong to drag you into it. That's why I'm going away now. Where are you going? Well, what difference does it make? I wouldn't ask you if I didn't care. You said that like you meant it. I do. I'm going with you. Oh, I can't let you in for anything I'm like going that. with but you. No, you... Who's that? I don't know. Open up in there. The place is surrounded. What are we going to do? Let them in, Millie. Yes, sir. You can go. You mean I can go back to Philadelphia? Yeah. Thanks, Lieutenant. Thanks. Uh, you can go, too, Mrs. Baxter. Can I see my husband? Not right now. Well, when? Tomorrow, maybe. Lieutenant, is there no hope? I'm sorry, Mrs. Baxter. Well, what about the money? You haven't found the money, have you? Surely if Paul were guilty, he'd have it. No, we haven't found it yet, but we will. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye, Mrs. Baxter. Maloney, put a tail on that guy, Hauser. We've got to find that money. And I've got a little job to do myself. I'll be back later. Oh, Mrs. Baxter, here's a letter came for you. A letter? It was forwarded from Grantsville. Oh, Fred's letter. Well, Mr. Gray, I'm in. He's on the roof garden, Mrs. Baxter. Shall I connect him? No, no, I'll go up. <laughs> Hello, Fred. Come on over here. On the other side of the chimney. View's perfect here. Does the wind bother you? No, no, I don't mind it. Good girl. Well, how'd it go? They wouldn't let me see him. Oh, it's, it's like a dream. A bad one, Fred. Look down there, Millie. Ten thousand people. Each one wrapped up in his own little world. Everybody has bad dreams. But we get over them. They look so tiny down there, don't they? Sure. After all, we're 22 stories up. Millie, what's that letter in your hand? 
Oh, oh, it's your letter, Fred. The clerk downstairs just gave it to me. Millie, don't read it. Why not? I'd rather you didn't. Give it to me. No. Let me have no, it. No, I want to read it. Hotel Philadelphia. Dearest Millie, here goes. I'm popping the question again. You might as well say yes because Fred Graham never sells himself short. Write me in care of the Sherwin Hotel in New York City. Hopefully, Fred. P.S. I just got hold of that present I promised you. I... I'm sorry you read that. It, it's not right to... A present? It was a pair of silk stockings. You... You weren't in New York at all. You were in Philadelphia. This letter was mailed from there the night of the murder. Now, Millie, wait a minute. And I... it was you. You used those stockings to strangle Prescott, didn't you? Now I understand why you took me to Lieutenant Blake instead of the missing persons bureau. Now I know why you stopped me from telling Blake I found Paul. And why you wanted this letter. Because you had to get hold of it so I wouldn't guess what happened in Philadelphia. Millie, you don't really believe it. Oh, yes, I do. Nobody knew where Paul and I were living except you. How did the police find out? How did the police find out? You told them. You took a chance on this letter never reaching me. But you're not going to get away with it. Okay, Millie. I did kill Prescott. Why shouldn't I? I wanted that ten grand. You admit it? Sure, I admit it. To you. I've got the money right here in my pocket. But you'll never be able to do anything about it, Millie. Oh, yes, I will. I'm going straight to Look the... down, Millie. Twenty-two stories down. You wouldn't dare. Why wouldn't I? What have I got to lose? They kill you just as dead for one murder as two. When they find your body on the street, they'll figure you couldn't stand the shame being married to a murderer. You, you wouldn't. It's too perfect to miss. And it'll clinch the case against Paul and leave me completely in the clear. Why, it's perfect. No! No! Keep away from me! It's no use, Millie. Keep away! <laughs> Graham. Huh? That's right. Keep your hands up there. And um, thanks. You've saved us a lot of trouble. Okay, Mrs. Baxter. There'll be someone waiting to see you. Yes. It's Paul. And he's not a stranger. <laughs> tonight's story of When Strangers Marry. In just a moment, I'll be back with a word about next week's story, but first... Next week, Screen Mystery Club has selected Universal Pictures' thrilling story titled The Lady in the Morgue. Thank you for being with us this evening. We'll expect you back for the next week, same time same station. And until then, this is Otto Kruger wishing you all a very pleasant good night. Tonight's story has been presented through courtesy of Monogram Pictures, makers of Dillinger, and was adapted for radio by Celie Glester and Merwin Girard. Screen Mystery Club was produced and directed by John Marshall and John Moore, and is presented by Marshall and Moore Incorporated. Howard Rhine speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. The smile is kind of strange. How'd you meet him? Well, you see, I was working in a little restaurant in Grantsville. That's where I live. And uh, one day he just came in. Love at first sight? No, I didn't pay much attention to him, really. I remember our first date. I didn't want to go. But somehow that night I found myself waiting for him. We just walked. He didn't say much. How long did you know him before you were married? Well, I only saw him three times, but... <sighs> I'm terribly in love with him. And he sent me a telegram to come to New York. Oh, here, I'll, I'll read it to you. August 11th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mildred Baxter. That's our name now. Have reserved room at Sherwin Hotel, New York. We'll meet you there tomorrow morning. Paul. What's his business? Well, he sells something or other. I really don't know. Well, it's almost as if you'd married a stranger, isn't it? Stranger? Well, you see, uh, uh, we... Uh... Sure, but I know it's really tough to find a room these days. 
I even have trouble trying to get a room for my friends in this hotel. I meet a bartender here. Imagine. Gee, I figured with the convention ending today, I'd surely get a room. Well, guess I'll get going. Hey, hey, wait a minute. One of them convention nights Mr. Prescott, he ain't checked out yet. He's got a suite. Arr, 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 I'm king of the jungle. That sounds like him now. Arr, 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 I'm king of the jungle. That's me, and I'm thirsty. Very, very thirsty. Ain't had a drink in, in... In about 20 minutes, Mr. Prescott. Ah, there you, Hauser, old boy, old boy. Yes, sir, Hauser, the bartender. The best front boy. Ice water up to 421 and then go to 926 and pick up bags. That old dame's checking out. Hey, Harry. Seen the papers? That silk stocking murder over in Philly was sure gruesome. <laughs> Glad nothing like that ever happens here at the Sherwin. Oh, clerk. Yes, ma'am? I'm Mrs. Baxter. Mrs. Baxter? My husband reserved a room. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, yes. He phoned in yesterday afternoon. Paul Baxter. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Run. Here, boy. Take Mrs. Baxter's things up to room 1410. Well, my husband didn't get here yet? No, not yet. Well, that's funny. He wired me that... Billy! Oh, Fred! What a break! I didn't think you'd come to New York. Oh, no, Fred, please don't. What, these people? What, they're just a bunch of tired salesmen. They've seen a kiss before. No, it's not that, Fred. Well, then what? You got my letter, didn't you? What letter? Well... What are you doing here? My husband sent for me. Your husband? Yes, I'm married, Fred. <laughs> oh. Well, do I know him? Well, I don't think so. His name's Paul Baxter. Well, when were you married? A month ago in Grantsville. Oh. Why are you stopping here at the Sherwin? This is a salesman's hotel. Paul's a salesman. Well, so am I, remember? <laughs> That's the reason you wouldn't marry me. Well, I, I he guess... He must have been a better salesman than me, I guess. Ah, but that won't keep me from wishing you the best of everything, Millie. And, uh... I'll be seeing you around. Fred? Yeah? What did you write in that letter? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter now. Desk clerk, this is Mrs. Baxter. Have you heard from Mr. Baxter yet? Oh, oh, you'll let me know, won't you? Yes, I'll be right here waiting. Thank you. Center in the Hotel Philadelphia. <laughs> That's a good one, ain't it? <laughs> well, set him up for me. Yeah, sure, but this man here is the only one in a place that's past closing time. Hello, friend. Have a drink? Thanks. Here, uh, that'll be a dollar twenty. Oh, um, Mr. Prescott, uh, yeah. this man ain't got a room to sleep in, and, um, he was wondering... Sure, if... sure, he can come up with me. I got a like of lots of room. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, here you Drop some of your money. Ah, that doesn't matter. I got lots of money. Ten thousand dollars right here. Always carried with me. I don't believe in banks. Tried them once, see? Gee, Mr. Prescott, you shouldn't ought to be carrying that much dough around with you. It might be dangerous. Dangerous? <laughs> I got my good friend here. Uh, what's your name, friend? Paul. See? Paul, well, protect me, won't you, Paul? Paul what? Just Paul. <laughs> Okay, just Paul. Come on with me. We'll find you a bed. Whoa! Mr. Prescott. Mr. Prescott, I got 26 rooms to clean, and I can't take all day at it. I got to come in and clean your place. Mr. Prescott. Them conventions. Oh, my lands fell asleep right in that chair, and and with a woman's silk stocking around his neck, the idea. Uh, uh, come on, Mr. Prescott, you got to get up. Mr. Prescott, you got to wake up and. Mr. Prescott. Good evening. This is Otto Kruger, welcoming you to the Screen Mystery Club.
Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to become a member of the Screen Mystery Club. Each week, a famous motion picture mystery story will be presented especially for club members. Tonight, we present When Strangers Marry, a superb blend of mystery and suspense. And now, here is your host and narrator of the Screen Mystery Club, the distinguished actor of both stage and screen, Mr. Otto Kruger. Hello. Well, pull up your chairs and make yourselves comfortable as we unfold the peculiar events in this week's prize screenplay, When Strangers Marry. Our story really begins, quite innocently, on a streamlined train speeding toward New York City. It is late, past midnight, and standing before the door of a private drawing room is an attractive girl in her early 20s, simply dressed, seems to be having difficulty making up her mind to knock. But finally... Pardon me, but uh, the porter is making up the berth in my car, and I wonder if I could sit here for a few minutes. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is my first trip to New York. Is that so? Yes, I... I'm going to meet my husband. How nice. Uh, uh, we, we're newlyweds. Oh... Well, child, go on. Tell me all about it. What's he like? Well, he's tall and handsome and has the nicest smile. A strange kind of smile. Just like him. I mean... Oh. I'm sorry, Millie. It's only me. Oh, Fred. I've been waiting and waiting. I understand, Millie. Sit down, Fred. Thanks. I don't know what to think. Paul was supposed to meet me here this morning, and, and here it is after three. Yeah, I know. But I'm sure he's all right. Oh, it's so awful waiting and not knowing. Well, wondering. Say, uh, maybe I can help you find him. Who does he work for? Well, I really don't know. Well, what does he sell? Oh, I know it seems strange, but I don't know for certain. Well, Millie, what can you tell me about him? Very little, I'm afraid. I only saw him three times before we were married. Three times? Yes, I, I know it sounds odd. Well, what about his family, then? Where do they live? I don't know that either. And all you have is a telegram he sent you? And our marriage license. May I see the telegram? Oh, yes, of course. Here. Mm-hmm. You see, he said he'd meet me here this morning. Yeah. Well, he'd probably show up in a little while, then. M maybe he got delayed by a buyer. I don't know how that is. But it sure looks like you married a stranger. A stranger? Yes, doesn't it? <laughs> Hello, desk clerk. This is Mrs. Baxter in room 1410 again. Have you heard from Mr. Baxter yet? Nothing? Well, yes, I know, but he was supposed to arrive this morning. It's after 10 now. Yes, please remember to put all calls through, no matter how late it is. Thank you. The weatherman promises some relief for New Yorkers tomorrow. He predicts the thermometer will be with a high of 84 at noon. Hello? Over on Kelly.